And the other opponent is shooting so well. But Shelby shoots 70% from the free throw line. You have to expect that they're going to be good free throw shooters. They were up 17, was Mansfield Sr. in the fourth quarter before the Whippets made one of the more miraculous comebacks I think I've ever seen, especially on the road. And I remember thinking at the time, this says a lot for the mental makeup of your kids. And Greg Galloway had to be very happy. Of course, you don't want to see your team go right. into the fourth quarter right. down 17, but they didn't panic. They didn't. They didn't stop doing the things that they wanted to do. They just right. executed a lot better, and they took advantages of the opportunities that they had. Well, they made a couple of adjustments at halftime, one of them being, again, you know, getting back on defense, maybe doing a little less, trying to offensive rebound, even though they did in the night with nine offensive rebounds. But they really made a, a concerted effort to get back on defense and, and, and not let the Tigers get to the hoop. The Tigers struggled. And Shelby just got that feeling, especially in the third quarter. They just got that rhythm, and, you know, we know they can score. They're one of the high, if not the highest scoring team, one of the highest scoring uh, teams in the area. You know, they average 67 points a game. We know a lot of programs around that are averaging in the low 40s. So 67 is what used to be, I guess, the 80s. You know, that's a lot of points right now. Especially with the three-point line. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing. In the first game, Shelby went 0 of 6 from the three-point line. I wouldn't expect that. I don't think they're going to try to live and die out there at the three, but you can't expect them to go over from the three-point line. Opening tip controlled by the Shelby Whippets. 19 and 3 on the regular season. They won the Mid-Ohio Athletic Conference. And this is one of the keys, I thought, for Shelby. Good ball movement, ball reversal. We've seen senior high fold at times when teams have been able to reverse the basketball and make them go from side to side defensively. Miles Bradley, the defensive specialist, comes up with the first steal of the game, but he's unable to convert, and the Whippets respond in transition. Well, it looked like... Uh, just like the other night. I mean, a steal right away, just taking the ball away from a ball handler and, and coming down the court on transition. Wednesday night, Miles was able to uh, finish that. Tonight, not so much. Marquis Sykes likes this small lineup. They use it against Galleon and were able to really get up and down the floor, and he was concerned about the possibility of them struggling on the boards, and he said he's going to keep Elias Owens and Amon Thomas close as you see Maurice Ware get the first bucket of the ball game. Big jumper from about 10 feet. We've seen him elevate from around the free throw line in the lane area. Here's from the corner. Shepard misfires, but an offensive rebound and a foul away from the ball. It's going to go to the Tigers. Well, I'm sure that Shelby looks and sees this smaller lineup that Senior High has thrown out there. And besides Maurice Ware, you know, they look and say, hey, we, we got to hit the offensive boards. That time just uh, had to throw somebody out of the way. So Senior High is smaller. They want to transition right now. So you got to check out, grab the rebound, and get the ball out and go. Good screen by Miles Bradley. Here's where at times we've seen senior high struggle. Half court offense. See if they get a little bit of ball movement here. Try to break down the uh, Shelby defense. Try to open up the lane. And they're going to call a five second violation or, on the Tigers. Or no, an offense. I think they called oh. an offense. Yeah. An illegal screen. So we've got one foul each. Call it on O'Brien, that's his first. Senior High being very physical with Bruckstarter right from the beginning, making it difficult for him to receive the pass. Maurice Ware drawing the defensive assignment on the taller Bruckstarter. Three in the air by Marshall Shepard. Well, so much uh, effort and so much concentration on Bruckstarter that somebody gets a wide open. Maurice Ware launches a three, and Andre Hill clears the rebound. Russ Cotter has it go off his <laughs> foot, but 
Fortunately for the Whippets, it goes right into the hands of Isaiah Ramsey and a three again by the Whippets, and they're up 6-2. Jeremy Holloway, you don't, I don't think of him as a real three-point shooter, but he just stepped right out and smooth, knocked down the long three. Tigers down by four, 5.19 to go. The winner plays the Clear Fork Lex winner. Deontay, or no, that's Chunky. Nathaniel Haney. Haney. Haney with a great move. And you know how much we've enjoyed watching him play. But he went in there against the tall players and got his body right into him and nice layup. Russ got her misfires and the Tigers hold Shelby to one shot. And they have an opportunity to high it, tie it here with a two. Andre Hill with a trip. Hill trying to make the argument for a hook, but it's going to go against Andre Hill. That's what I see in every NBA game. There's got to be an argument over every call. It doesn't matter if it's obvious. you got to argue. Now, as you progress in the tournaments, here we are in the sectional finals. Usually, what I have seen, the officials are going to let you play a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit more physical. Haney with a shot fake, misfires from outside. We know that's a shot that he can make, actually. Nathaniel Haney shooting 34% from three. Runner in the lane by Holloway doesn't go, and the Tigers with another opportunity to tie it. So far, Shelby's done a pretty good job of getting back on defense. Ball out of bounds, and it will go to Shelby. Now, if we can see on the replay here, Maurice Ware trying to make the case for the Tigers, but really can't tell. <laughs> I don't, don't know why he would have thrown it out of bounds, but good pressure defense by senior high. You can see where Shelby's trying to start their offense, a little further out than what they're probably familiar with. Kyvy Roan now into the lineup for the Tigers. Andre Ooh. Hill out of control, but the foul is going to be called on Haney. And they're going to give him two free throws. And again, Shelby is a 70% as a team. Andre Hill here is 80%, so he's an outstanding free throw shooter. I think back to our game Wednesday night with four minutes to go in the first quarter. Wasn't the score like 16 to 14 or something? I mean, it was. There was a little more offense. Yeah, and, and Gallion even had things clicking in that first quarter on Friday night. Hill makes them both. Shelby's not a team you want to put to the free throw line, and that's a sign of a very good basketball team, a team that can hit their free throws, especially when they're needed. Well, and as you go deeper into the tournament, as Carry On Lindsay launches a three, as you go deeper into the tournament, that can be an important aspect as the games get tighter. Oh, no question. No question. Yeah, again, they're going to let you play. You're probably not going to go to the free throw line as much as you progress, but as you know, when it gets to crunch time, you better be able to hit your free throws. Nice pass inside. Truck starter just with a little bit of size and I don't know who, was that the quarterback that threw that in? That would have made sense if it was. <laughs> but nice recognition by Shelby. Shelby now with a six-point lead as Russ Cotter gets into the scoring column. Carry on, Lindsey. And the shots that were falling against Gallion are not falling here against the Shelby Whippets. Nice pump fake. Nice pump fake, get the defense off their feet and convert. 30-second timeout taken by the Tigers as the lead is now up to eight. And as easy as things were on Wednesday night against Galleon, it seemed like every shot was falling. Now they're getting some good looks, but they're just not dropping. Yeah, they are good looks. Maybe not as good as they were on, on Wednesday night. It seemed like on Wednesday night they were getting some uncontested, where it was just left, hand, left foot, right hand, or right foot, left hand layups. Now at least there's some, some pressure in there. And when you're talking about Shelby, there's a good chance it's going to be some size that's going to be close, some strength. So 
not quite as good, but certainly makeable shots. I agree with you. Senior High's just got to convert cu a couple of those and get back into this basketball game. Elias Owens into the lineup for Marquis Sykes, so he gets a little bit of size in there. Owens at 6'5", a sophomore. Malachi Johnson also in, and he has the ball. Ware penetrates inside and splits three defenders, but it doesn't drop. And that ball was 90% in and then came out. But that was a nice move by Barice Ware to, to shoot the floater so he wouldn't charge. Ball bounces off of Bryson Baker. I don't think he was expecting the pass, and the Tigers will get the ball back. Shelby's a team that only averages 12 turnovers a game, and already I think they're at uh, four or so, and Senior High's defense is forcing those. Malachi Johnson kicks it out. Giante O'Brien from outside, and he hits the three. And that was a big three. Big three by Bryant. It's a good ball reversal. Inside out, ball reversal to the side for a, an open jumper, and O'Brien knocks it down. Russ Cotter gets away from Maurice Ware. Ball <laughs> batted around, and is it going to go to the Tigers? It's going to yes. go to the Tigers. How often does a rebound come down to a man laying on the ground? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that time it did. He tried to throw it to a teammate in the corner, but the guy had already left. Shelby 12, Mansfield Senior 7 as we're under uh, two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Now you'll watch when Maurice Ware catches the ball especially, Shelby is going to show a lot of help in the paint, trying to cut down dribble penetration. Especially Maurice Ware who can dribble penetrate and does it so effectively. Uh, the other players do it well, so there will be some help. Um, Bryant again for three. And the rebound falls into the hands of Alex Prescott. And that time Owens did get a hand on the ball. Holloway nice with the left hand. It's like the ball slipped off his hands. It's a jump ball. The possession arrow goes to Shelby. No, actually now goes to Shelby as the Tigers will get the ball now. That was a difficult move. He dribbles with his right hand strong to the basket and does a 180 to his left hand. And you're right. He just lost the ball or he would have connected on that. See how the help now, we, we got people in the lane going to give help, especially Maurice Ware catches it. Johnson with a strong take inside. He's going to go to the line, and he'll shoot a pair. Now, it's tough to give help when somebody beats you north-south. When they beat you on a direct line, especially from the top, that's difficult to give help. That time, able to go dribble penetrate hard to his right, what we call a blow-by get to the basket, almost get a three-point opportunity. Malachi Johnson makes the first free throw attempt for a Tiger tonight, and freshman Jacob Legrand now in as Owen sits down, so the Tigers go small again. Well, again, he's had a lot of success when Maurice Ware has the ball in his hand and penetrates because of the help that Maurice gets. He's been kicking it out to Jacob, who Geez, I don't know if anybody's been hotter from the three-point line in the area than he has in the last few games. Shelby up by four. Baker with a strong take inside, and that was a strong fate, a strong take. He's just got to finish that. Roan at the other end, and a foul is going to be called. If that's on Baker, that's his second. And again. North-South, a blow-by from up top. It's tough to give help, and Roan, using his strength, just took Baker right to the rim. Kyvie Roan at the line. 75% free throw shooter, and he misses the first, so the Tigers now one for three from the line. Yeah, they've, they've had problems all year from the free throw line. They're not a great free throw shooting team, and it certainly cost them in their first game against uh, Shelby. Reese Ware is going to get a rest with about 38 seconds to go in the quarter, but you know he won't be on the no. bench too long. No. 
Though we saw with Maurice Ware on the bench, of course, Wednesday night, but we saw on Saturday against Madison where the offense still flowed pretty well. They were able to score. Roan misses them both. And an opportunity for the Tigers to pull to within two. Now the question is, will they hold for the last shot or will Shelby try to score quick and give Senior High the chance? Shepard, jump stop inside and the layup drops. That was a nice move, nice strong move. Still 12 seconds left. A lot of time for Senior High to get his shot off. Roan to Kincaid Gibson. And that's, and that's his, his shot. Exactly. Either corner. He loves that little baseline jumper. Andre Hill launches, and that will do it for the first quarter. Shelby up by four as we head to the second in the Division II sectional championship. You're watching Boys High School Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. Shelby with a 14 to 10 lead as we start the second quarter. Both teams have missed some offensive opportunities here yep. in the opening quarter and the scoreboard operator getting a break after Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, not quite as much scoring today. Even the first time these two teams played, Senior High had a big, big first quarter jumping out 21-16. Shepard from about eight. And Maurice Ware heads the other way for the brown and orange. And again, blow by. Count it. He's fouled, and he'll go to the line. Again, I, I, I'm going to repeat myself, but it's just tough to give help when somebody beats you down the middle. That's the third straight that I can think of. Uh, maybe Gibson had a shot in there, but three of the last four baskets have been the cause of dribble penetration down the middle. Can't get help and just beating the man-to-man -man defense. Ware had 23 the first time these two teams met. He converts on the free throw, and it's a one-point game. Right away with good pressure. Oh, nice Euro step. Andre Hill with the left hand. That was a beautiful Euro step. Shelby back up by three. Brock Hill now into the lineup for Mansfield Senior. Did he have a game on Wednesday night oh, or what? he sure did. Andre Hill with a steal, heads the other way. And it's knocked away, and the Tigers have it. I think Bradley knocked it away, saved him two points. Gibson with a layup, and the Tigers are back to within one. And again, transition. Russ Goddard from just inside the three-point line, and Maurice Ware commits a foul on the backside rebound by Isaiah Ramsey. Gibson's a young man that uh, we didn't see a lot during the regular season, or at least the games that we had, until very late, and he's impressed us. He has that good mid-range shot. He takes the ball hard to the basket. There was an example. Shelby now three of three from the line. A lot of good young talent coming up for the Tigers. 
Ramsey makes them both, and it's back to a three-point lead. And if you're Shelby right now, I think you're thinking, hey, we've got to cut down dribble penetration from the top. Force the ball to the wing where we can give some help. Ball off the foot of Bradley, and it will go to Shelby. Miles has a turnover right there, but we've seen some offensive contribution from him over the last two or three games that we didn't see a lot this season. Certainly he's a tremendous defensive player, and that's why he's played so much because he's a defensive stopper. So any offense you get is a, is a bonus. Well, the last time these two teams met, he scored 10. Nice, nice look inside to Bruscotter. They did a great dribble handoff. And now uh, with the turnover. And Ramsey is bumped. You don't see a lot of high school teams do that dribble handoff. You see it so much in college. It's so effective. If the dribbler handles the ball and takes it towards the defender, it's tough for the defender. Does he go over? Does he go under? And so often it gives that guy who's receiving the handoff an open lane like it did that last uh, possession for Shelby. Ball kicked out of bounds by Brock Hill. It will stay with Shelby. They've pushed the lead back to five, and Bruce Goddard has the ball slip right out of his hands. That's what, second time he's had that. And Maurice Ware bumps <laughs> into Miles Bradley. It's like, is it a turnover if it's caused by my own teammate? <laughs> and Hill drives inside, and the, I think they put Crisco on the ball, and it will stay with Shelby. Now, I, I'm assuming it's the same basketball they used on Wednesday night, but often you come out to your first tournament game, the first tournament game at a site, and they're using a brand-new basketball. Maybe they didn't even let their host school play with it at all. And, boy, that is a slick ball. I don't know if that's the excuse tonight. Owens, and he's fouled, and Jeremy Holloway can't believe it. That's his second personal, so he has two. Bryson Baker has two. Elias, of course, played a great deal during the beginning of the season. Then he was injured and has only been back, I believe, three, four games right now. Kincaid Gibson and Jayante O'Brien in for Mansfield Sr. Bryson Baker comes back in for Shelby as Holloway sits down with the two personals. Have we seen Amon Thomas yet tonight? Yes, he has been has in. Has he been in? Maybe I should start paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Owens makes them both. Tigers down by three, five and a half to go. That's pretty good confidence by Elias Owens. He was 4 of 20 from the free throw line. Come down and hit two. Marshall Shepard picked up by Bradley. You can see there's a little bit more hand checking than what you probably see during the regular season. And, yep. and uh, as you say that, a foul away from the foul ball. Is called, yeah. But during the regular season, it's probably called a lot more often. Tonight you're seeing a little bit more hand checking where the referees are letting you go, letting the call go. And as you progress, baby, it, it gets physical. I suggest all the players wear a mouth guard. <laughs> and I'm saying I think all pl basketball players should. It is a physical game these days. Andre Hill for three from the corner. And Maurice Ware skies for the rebound. Ball poked away by Baker. Shelby's got numbers now. Baker with a nice shot fake. And it looked like he rushed the shot just a little bit. He did. I don't think he got his feet under him on that jump shot right there. But a good battle inside uh, by uh, Mansfield Senior by Kincaid Gibson. Brock Hill, who had 18 against Galleon, did not miss a shot. Seven for seven 
including four for four from right there. All and right. he missed his first shot on this floor this week. I can't wait to tell him who made the who jinxed him, Brian Harder. <laughs> But you're right, because he was, uh, what would you say, four for four from three? Well, nice. Good cut. On the cut. Good pass. Good backdoor cut. Good better pass. Tigers pulled him in one. Shepard drives inside, lays it up and in. That was a nice, strong move. He looked like he was going to shoot the jumper, but he saw the lane just open up and Owens from the baseline. Tigers now being a little more assertive on the offensive glass, and they keep the possession alive. They are. They just they just wanted it more in that shot. Where on Shepard? You've noticed the Shelby has cut down penetration from the top, which was hurting them early in this quarter. Brock Hill inside off the feed from where? And he uses his strength. Shelby now with a one point lead. Andre Hill tries to answer with an off balance shot and the Tigers can take the lead. And where it's gonna be an offensive foul. Yeah, I thought the defense was set and Maurice just tried to jump to the side, but did make contact, was at two fouls on Maurice Ware, so. So he'll come out. Haney comes back into the game along with Kyvie Roan. A timeout on the floor, 3.02 to go before halftime. And we're not seeing the offense that we saw on Wednesday, but you can feel the tension building here in Bucyrus as this game, obviously, as we've mentioned, has a lot more at stake than the game did back at Pete Henry. Well, it, it does, exactly. And I don't think we're seeing the offense today because I think we're seeing pretty darn good defense. You know, very few, I can't think of any, where it's been an uncontested layup. That last layup that Brock Hill got maybe wasn't contested under the basket, but to get to that point, there were bodies all around, there were hands all around, it took a great pass, and it took his strength to get through the hands and lay that ball up. So both teams are playing pretty good defense, I think, very good defense. You know, both teams can keep this defense up. It's going to be a close, tight game the entire way. Well, and it could come down to what we've talked about all season long, how you do from the line. And we're going to see a foul on Holloway. That's his third. They called on Holloway or they called on Brock Hill? No, nope, yeah, they called they on did. Brock. They gave it to yeah. Hill. Yeah, and that, I don't know if we have the replay of that, but who is ever, uh, whoever is defending Holloway, you've got to call. You've got to call the screen. Maurice Ware's got to call the screen. When he's quiet, Brock Hill is guarding the ball. He's too busy. His concentration is keeping the ball in front of him. He doesn't know when a screen's coming. You've got to communicate. You've got to let him know a screen is right there. Kyvy Rome now coming back into the ball game. Maurice Ware is going to sit down. So Holloway will go to the line. His first trip to the stripe tonight. Holloway with two personals himself. That's an interesting uh, dilemma that coaches have. Two personal fouls in a close game in the second quarter. You really like to start that third quarter with only two fouls at the most for any one player, especially a, an essential player. But, you know, sometimes coaches think, well, you know, we can't afford to sit this guy down. He's smart enough. Holloway is a senior, smart kid, so maybe play through it. With Maurice Ware out, okay, now he's coming out, which I think is a good move. Carson Brubaker gets him out. So with 2.55 to go, Shelby with a three-point lead. Haney, right through the trees. Right through there, right. That, that was a nice move, a good blow by. Uh, wasn't from the top, but it was a tough angle to give help, but there still should have been a little bit of help there. 
Bruscotter from the elbow, and Bruscotter's been quiet offensively. And a great box out by Carry On Lindsay that time. Haney wide open for three, and he misses. Oh, a nice blow by there by Brubaker. Well, that was a good move by Brubaker. He hesitated, and then he just blew right by. The hesitation got the defense to stand up, and he went right by for a nice layup. Wasn't an easy layup. He had to lean out in front of him, but you can tell he's practiced that. Under two minutes to go, and it's been a close game throughout. Haney, and a foul is going to be called, and Haney's going to go to the line. I think I said that was Brubaker, but that was number two. Was that, uh, oh, Carson, Carson Brubaker? That was on Marshall Shepard. So Haney will go to the line, his first trip tonight. And this is what we saw against Galleon. He's the fifth Tiger to go to the line. He misfires. And he's a good free throw shooter. So. And if there's anybody from Mansfield that I would feel comfortable with at the line, it's Haney. Well, and as you've talked about all season long, for the Tigers to win, they have to attack the paint. And they when do. you do that, you're going to get fouled. Exactly. You're going to get your opportunities. You just got to convert the free throws. Haney, a 5'8 junior. And he splits the pair. So now it's a two-point ball game. If I'm Shelby, I'd like to see him go back to maybe a little bit more dribble handoffs. That was so effective for him. A foul, and that's going to be on carry on Lindsay. So back to the line go the Shelby Whippets. This is Ramsey. He's already two for two. I tell you, this is, this is a game. I look out at Shelby, and I see so many good athletes, so many good athletes. I look at senior high, I see so many good athletes. Just so much more fun to watch a basketball game when you have all this athletic ability out on the court. Tigers down four, 124 to go in the second quarter. Gibson. Pulls up from about seven, but an offensive rebound by Bradley. Ball on the floor, and Haney comes away with it. And a nice left hand. Nice left hand. He had the defense right on his right side. Only shot he had was with his left. Talk about being at the right place at the right time, and it's taken away again. Hill for three. Boy, he could not miss on Wednesday night. Now he can't get that first shot to drop. Yeah, that shot as a coach, you got to let him take it. He was so hot the other night, you know he's feeling confident. Russ got her for three. Speaking of confidence. And that was downtown. Yep. That was deep. Russ got her, a sophomore, plays with the poise of a senior. Bradley pulls up just inside the free throw line. Now, now a little scoring flurry here yeah, before the do. half. I would think it's going to slow down here. I would think Shelby's going to go. And a timeout taken by Greg Galloway as the ball was knocked away. And I think he was concerned about getting the ball across half court. 18 seconds to go. And Shelby with a three-point lead. This is the kind of ball game I expected. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's going to be like this the whole way. Uh, for Shelby right there, using the timeout, I think you're right. Greg Galloway wanted to use it, thought it might be a 10 count, but boy, you want to have all your timeouts at the end if you can in a game like this, because it's probably going to be tight till the very end. Use those timeouts judiciously. Now that Shelby is down to three, senior high with their four. There you see some of the Clear Fork faithful coming in. It looks like the Clear oh, Fork team. team. Yeah, yeah. Do they look like they have their game face on? Not often do you get a team that's, you know, that's struggled like they have at 0-22 that gets to play for a championship like they do tonight. 
And we're going to get a foul on Kincaid Gibson as he was not wanting Alex Bruscotter to get open. Well, he missed it on the replay, but there was plenty of contact. So Bruscotter will go to the line. What a good-looking sophomore for Shelby. Led the MOAC in scoring. We've had him as our MVP so often, and you've interviewed him, and I know you've been impressed with him. He just seems like a great kid, and the maturity level for a sophomore. Yeah, you forget that he's a sophomore. You're right. Now 18 seconds left. A lot of time for senior high. Shelby would love to get a stop right here. Bradley. This is all with Maurice Ware on the bench. Tough shot by Haney doesn't go. And a little bit early gives Shelby another chance. Yep. Little confusion there at the end of the half and Shelby with a 33-28 lead as we head to the intermission. You're watching Boys High School Tournament Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Report founder Brian Skaronsky and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns after this. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. That's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. It's Freedom Fest Ohio featuring Justin Moore. You look like I'm in a drink right now. Crowder. Rodney Atkins, Austin French, and more. Friday and Saturday, July 1st and 2nd, Morrow County Fairgrounds in Mount Gilead, Ohio. For tickets and more info, visit freedomfestohio.com.
Welcome to the Finley and Sons Drain Service Halftime Show. I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins, and we have got a good one here in Bucyrus as the Shelby Whippets and the Tigers of Mansfield Senior. There's only five points separating them here at the intermission. The winner of this game will take on the Clear Fork Lexington winner. That game will be played right after this one. Both games you can see here on OH Report. And so far, the rematch from that game in January has not been a disappointment. No, it's been a little bit different. If we remember back to that game, as you mentioned in pregame, Senior High had a big lead at halftime. Shelby dominated the second half. Here, I think maybe once it got up to seven point difference for Shelby, but Senior High fought back. I don't know if they've ever been able to take the lead after the first couple of minutes, but you know, it's going to be a game, I think, it's going to come down to the last couple of minutes. And who makes the plays to get the win? Largest lead of the night. Shelby has been up by eight. They have a okay. five-point cushion here at the intermission. As we take a look at the halftime numbers, everything here seems to really be pretty even, including the score. Well, you know, we, we talked about the first game. The difference was the free throw shooting, the success that Shelby had, the misses that, that Mansfield Sr. had. Well, the difference is five free throws made by uh, uh, more by Shelby than Mansfield Senior, and that's the difference in the score right now. Besides that, the only key I would see, and I could see senior high coaches talking about it, inside the arc, which I think is where the game is going to be won, where I think 95% of all high school games are won, are inside the arc. Um, Senior high is shooting 58%. Shelby only 38%. So senior high is doing a good job of contesting inside the arc shots. On the other hand, senior high has done pretty well at dribble penetration. Yeah, we made the comment that they're not finishing like they did Wednesday night, but they're still finishing pretty well. It's not offensive rebounds. I think senior high has three, Shelby has two. Nobody is dominating on the offensive boards. But, you know, the better shots you can get, the more success you're going to have. And right now, Senior High is getting some good looks at the basket. The only difference, again, being this free throws. Individually, Ma Al uh, Marshall Shepard has nine, along with Alex Bruscotter for Shelby. Bruscotter, not an explosive half, but no. he's one of those guys that in the second half, if they need a basket, you know they're going to go to him. He could be one for ten and it's not going to matter. Right. He just has that kind of points. And, and we have not seen all the players this year, all the teams. But And we've made this comment. I've made this comment before. Maurice Ware and Brooke Scotter are the best at getting to the 15 feet, pulling up, and shooting the jumper. They have good height. They have good strength. But they also have good touch. Neither of them have been able to get to the lane and pull up for a jumper yet. Ware a couple times has gotten to the basket. Ruckstarter a couple times got gotten to the basket, knocked down some threes. But when it is a basket is really needed, I could see one or both those guys putting it on themselves, get the ball to the paint. If they can't get all the way to the rim, pull up, shoot a jumper because they're so good at it. Now, an interesting move by Marquis Sykes, I think. Ware, with five points, picked up a couple fouls, yep. and he sat for a good part of the end of the second quarter. Right. And I think he knows, I'm going to need him down the stretch. We cannot have him picking up that third foul. Well, exactly. To be able to start the third quarter with three fouls, you can start being aggressive. You don't have to have hands off. You can be aggressive. If you pick up a third foul in the third, so be it. But... You know, if you start with three fouls, much, much different. Nathaniel Haney leads Mansfield Senior with seven, and he hasn't scored the way that we're used to seeing him score. No, he's had a couple of nice takes to the basket. Really done a good job. And, you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I probably have gone overboard because I have said from last year how much I just love that kid and the way he plays. He plays hard all the time. He plays, you know, gives a great effort on defense. When he does make a mistake, it's not because of lack of effort. Uh, you know, he's just playing hard. He has, I think, you know, Maurice Ware's got a good shot outside. I know LeGron has been shooting the ball well from the outside, but still, 
if I want, if I have an open three, I would want Nathaniel Haney taking that open three, and I certainly would want him at the free throw line in a, in a, a difficult and a tough situation. Now, if you're Marquis Sykes, do you go back to the small lineup here to start the third quarter? Well, you know, I, I think it worked pretty well. It's not like Shelby is is you know doing anything on the offensive boards. They have what two, maybe three offensive rebounds. So. Whatever offense, whatever lineup you think can get you out and running, get you out on transition, the most effective offense senior high has had has been dribble penetration from up high, up around the top of the key area. So, you know, continue to talk about ball reversal, but as that ball is reversed to the point, if you can get that ball to somebody that can dribble penetrate where it's less likely to have help defense, Senior high has shown the ability to get some blow buys. So you're Mansfield senior, and you already have one in your book where you had a big lead and you let it slip away. You're Shelby. You were able to come back from that. Does one of these teams have an advantage tonight? I think so. I, I do. And I don't think it has anything to do with game one between these two teams. I think that's all forgotten right now. But people... I'm sure the Mansfield kids have heard a lot of people, a lot of people in Mansfield talk to them, well, you're going to play one game in the tournament, you're going to play two, you're not going to do anything. Where I have a feeling people in Shelby, they're, they're expecting another nice run like they did last year. Uh, I would rather be the chaser than the chasee. Uh, but so far, Shelby has been loose. Uh, yeah, there probably is more turnovers tonight than what we would like, nine from I think Shelby, eight for Mansfield Senior, but you know, a lot of those were early. And but again, I would I would rather be the senior high and be the chaser. So they're playing with house money. I think so. I think so. Um, though you're not gonna be able to convince Coach Sykes of that because he's used to winning. Well, the first thing he said to me after the Galleon win was, This is how I envision this team playing right. all year. Right. So that's the expectation that he had. And for a young, young group. Yeah, Maurice Ware's a senior. Miles Bradley's a senior, but they're a young group. Bradley misses the first shot of the third quarter for the Tigers. I like what Senior High did. They came out with a set. It was to post up Miles Bradley and let him go with his left hand. He just missed it, but a nice set. Kincaid Gibson starts the third quarter on Alex Bruscott. That's a tough matchup. Tough matchup for the young boy to have to guard Alex. Again, he's so good off the dribble, and you can't give him a cushion because he'll shoot it. Andre Hill with an offensive foul as Carrion Lindsay stepped into the lane. And Carrion, just too much dribbling that time by Andre, and a lot of people standing by Shelby, and Senior High just watching the dribble, and Carrion said, well, I know where he's going. I'm just going to step in front. Good job taking the charge. So Haney, Lindsey, Bradley, Ware, and Kincaid Gibson start the third quarter for Mansfield Senior. It's the regular starting lineup for the Shelby Whippets. Haney for three. And Hill steps out of bounds. It'll go to the Tigers. And I'll tell you what, if Haney would have hit that three, all of the orange and brown faithful on the other side would have erupted. Yeah, yeah, it would have been, uh, that would have been big, and it was a good shot by a good shooter. They have a tough hill to climb, though. Shelby has won 19 games. So far in this early in the, second, in the uh, third quarter, they have two turnovers, though, so again, is it nerves? Bradley puts it on the floor and tried to go over to Gibson, but it was intercepted by Marshall Shepard. Andre Hill has it taken away as his pocket was picked by Miles Bradley. Into Ware. Tough body control by Maurice Ware. That was. I mean, he lost the basketball, had to regain it as he was going up to shoot, but a third turnover by the Whippets. Now they're getting a little bit more body movement, a little bit more people moving off the basketball, which will open up the lanes a little bit more. Good on the ball defense by Ware. 
Andre Hill drives inside, misses the layup, and here come the Tigers. Up ahead to Ware. And it's a one-point game as we're under six minutes to go in the third quarter. And at first, I think Maurice was looking for a dunk. Ball batted away on the floor, and the Tigers call time. So a heads-up play by Kerryon Lindsey, and the Tigers get the ball with 5.42 to go in the third quarter, down by one. Now they're just playing so much harder right now in this beginning of the third period than what Shelby is. And as you said, it just takes that one or two plays to get the fans up going, get them excited, which carries over to the players. And you know what's going on in that timeout right now. They're talking about keeping the energy, keeping the energy. Now on the other side, Greg Galloway, what is he telling his team? I think you just, you know, calm down, fellas. I mean, this is not, this is not the way that, that Shelby plays basketball. They have, you know, they've had a great season. They obviously haven't, you know, had many times this season where they've had three turnovers and four possessions. Uh, it just happens here. Senior highs being aggressive. They got to realize they got to be strong with the basketball. And it seems like every 50-50 ball isn't 50-50. It seems like senior high is quicker to the ball right now than what Shelby is. Andre Hill picks up carry on Lindsay. They're going to go with another set. Looks like a ball screen for Maurice trying to get to the paint for a pull up. Again, this is where he's so good. But Shelby with a very good job of guarding the paint. Haney off balance. It doesn't go, but an offensive rebound and a foul is going to be called. Looks like that will go on Ramsey. Kincaid Gibson has gotten a couple of offensive boards tonight. We've seen him offensive rebound. I look at him, and I just don't see an offensive rebounder, but he is. He, he attacks it. He's aggressive. The foul was given to Holloway, so that's his third. That's big. That's big to start the quarter, and he's going to stay out right now. Bradley with a runner in the lane, grabs his own miss, and with a shot fake, it's blocked out of bounds by Isaiah Ramsey. And again, Miles Bradley misses the first shot, but I, I just think he wanted it more. It was not a good box out. He just attacked and got the rebound and got a second chance. Heard Phil Martelli use this term, and in all my years of watching and coaching, I'd never heard it before, a self-rebound. Yeah. <laughs> and you're talking about a, a great coach. I know he's taking over for Michigan right now for the regular season, but I remember his days at St. Joe and some of the great, great teams. But, you know, he certainly put out some great players. I'm just not sure with his Eastern accent how you understand him when he talks. Ware misfires from the block. Said when he took the job at Michigan as an assistant, the first time he ever left Philadelphia. <laughs> he does have that Philadelphia accent. That's a big basket, a good take, and that wasn't an easy basket by any means. Uh, but a good take, used his strength, and a soft shot off the backboard. Russ Cotter puts Shelby back up by three. I think you and I would both think that for Shelby to pull this out, Brooks Scotter's got to have a much better or score a lot more here in the second half. He is a scoring threat. He can score. He's got to get more shots up. Carry on Lindsay, trying Good. to just find a crack of daylight in the lane. Nice look inside to Brock Hill. And he just, Brock Hill just beat his man on a cut and a simple layup. Nice pass, though. On that offensive rebound by Miles Bradley, he had to go to the bench, and it looks like the trainers are tending to him a foul as Carrion Lindsay tried to help on the penetration. Yeah, I thought uh, the way the official was pointing at him, maybe there was some blood or something, and he just had to get that cleaned up. Well, he's getting ready to come back in. I think uh, from what I've seen, Miles, with football and basketball, hes uh, it's probably somebody else's blood. <laughs> <laughs> Miles Bradley, I don't know if they're any tougher than Miles Bradley. And according to our expert, it's a shin bleed. <laughs> I think that's an official thing. Bradley shin bleed. 
<laughs> Shepard at the line. Is our producer, is he a doctor? Uh, he stayed at a Holiday Inn Express Okay, once. all right, so he, he knows what's going on. Shelby up by two. And Lindsey kicks it over to Gibson. And Gibson has it blocked, but he's fouled. This on Holloway, it's his fourth. You know, I tell you what, Gibson impresses me so much. You know, he takes a much taller man. He gives up the 12-footer, which he is so good at. Probably the defense was out on him. Takes it right to the hole, and he challenges a much taller man. And you're right, big foul. Limited action has Gibson seen, and he misses the free throw. You know, Jeremy Holloway at 6'5", a senior with a lot of experience. At least the remainder of the third quarter, I would imagine he's going to be sitting. And Gibson splits the pair. And right away, seniors up with their pressure. They pulled it within one. Holloway goes to the bench with four fouls. What a good matchup right here. Brock Scotter, Maurice Ware. Now switch off to another senior on him. Andre Hill tries to split two defenders, and he drives right into carry on Lindsay, and Lindsay picks up foul number three. You can see that. Shelby and both teams really trying to get that ball to the basket. Trying to be aggressive, get the ball to the basket. For Shelby's sake, they'll take getting fouled because they're such a good free throw shooting team. Hill two for two from the line, and he misses. That's yeah. the first miss on the night for Shelby from the line. And we're talking about an 80% free throw shooter. If I kept my mouth shut, he probably would have made it. But. And he misses them both. And a rebound by Bradley, and the Tigers can take the lead. And I think right there, that rebound was just Miles Bradley showing his strength. Pass went up to Owens. At least I think that's where it was supposed to go. And Brad, Miles. If it went in, you know, Maurice would have said, oh, yeah. no, that was, that was a shot. <laughs> Giante O'Brien. If you're Shelby, just sit down, play defense. Sit down. Don't let him penetrate. That's his shot. And he hits it. Tigers up by one. Kincaid Gibson with a touch shot from the baseline. But the Tigers hustle to get back. And yeah. Shelby back on top. Senior high a little slow getting down the court. Shelby doing a great job of recognizing that. Kicking the ball ahead and getting an easy bucket. We haven't seen too many easy buckets today. That's one of them. Ware picked up by Shepard. O'Brien was able to get a couple defenders. They thought they were going to draw the foul, and Shelby back up by one. Russ got her on Ware. Long three. That was a long three. Good defense. Not the best shot selection by Alex Bruscotter. The Tigers head to the other end with a one-point lead. The last time these two teams played, Shelby trailed by 17 heading into the fourth quarter. They're not sweating a one-point deficit now. No, no. Nice defense. Good quick hands. Isaiah Ramsey comes up with the pick. Baker. Nice shot by Bryson Baker, the sophomore, and Shelby back up by two. And that was a nice find, and that was. You're right. All the momentum was with the Tigers. So that was a tough shot, much needed shot by Bryson Baker. Oh, it's for three in the corner. And we've seen him knock down some threes. Oh, 
Andre Hill, and he draws the foul. What I'd like to see is on that dribble penetration right there, if uh, uh, I'm not sure if Adam will be able to get that on the uh, replay, but uh, on that dribble penetration right there, he cupped the ball. Cupped the ball strong, like a running back going through the hole right there, like a running back, so he wouldn't fumble it, and then at the last second went up for the shot. But, you know, no turnover was going to be had there. It was either a foul or give him a layup. Andre Hill had missed his last two free throws. He makes this one. I got to apologize to Adam. I don't know how all this works. I don't, you know, I somebody just taught me the other day how to use the phone. So I... I I think he just wants you to start pushing buttons. Well, I think he's tired of me elbowing him. That's what. <laughs> Hill makes them both. He's now four for six from the line. Shelby up by four. And a five-point run, which is a run in uh, in this game right here. After senior high takes the lead, Shelby comes back. Where picked up by Shepard. Gibson from the free throw line. And Jonte O'Brien with an offensive rebound. Look at all the Tigers in there. Just can't come up with it. Shepard up ahead to Brubaker. Ball knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with Shelby. The exact same shot that Brubaker had early where he did a great job of getting a pump fake and getting Maurice Ware to go by. This time the pump fake, ah, he rushed it a little bit. But Shelby regains possession. And why not go to your key player? Russ Cotter loses the handle, goes to the Tigers. A little bit of talking out there right now, too. A little well, bit of chirping. And I like the leadership of Marshall Shepard. Went over yeah. to Alex Russ Cotter and said, hey, it's okay, forget about it. Go exactly. to the other end of the floor. Yep, you're exactly right. Don't get caught up into that. Marshall Shepard, of course, rewrote the record books at Shelby as their quarterback, and you can see that leadership on the hardwood. Where? Right by Shepard. Still a lot of time left. Russ Cotter, and he's going to draw the foul on Maurice Ware, and it's a three-shot foul. And he drew that foul. That was a great job offensively. Maurice Ware had good defense. You want to, in the closing seconds, you want to fan the ball handler to the sideline. Don't let him back to the middle. That time, I don't know if he leaned into Maurice Ware. Maurice Ware just reached. But he was doing a great job for the first four or five seconds of that defensive possession. Russ Goddard misses the first, and that's what I... When I see that kind of poise from a sophomore and that yeah. kind of headiness yep. from a sophomore. And he misses the second one. Shelby with a two-point lead. And Bruscotter makes the third. And that will do it. We head to the fourth quarter. Shelby 44, Mansfield Senior 41. You are watching Boys High School Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. 
A Division II sectional championship on the line. Shelby up by three as we head to the fourth quarter. Maurice Ware on that foul at the end of the third. That was his third personal. And Jeremy Holloway with four. As we take a look at the foul once again, Holloway still on the bench for Shelby. Which I think is good. He's got four fouls. Let him sit for as long as you can afford to. Shepard. They just don't look comfortable tonight handling the basketball against senior high. Now let's look at uh, the foul situation. Right now, uh, Shelby with only four team fouls, senior high with three, so doesn't look like anybody's close to the one-on-one. -on -one. Jacob Legrand comes up with a rebound for the Tigers, and a three can tie it. Legrand thought about the three. And this is where Legrand really takes it. See how he's in a shooter stance right now? Well, look at his hands. He's ready to catch it, shoot, or drive. Great job preparing himself to shoot. And he loses the handle, and Andre Hill pushes to the other end. Shelby calmly resets. And Bruscotter went up to set the ball screen. Ball knocked away. It'll stay with Shelby. Quick hands by senior high. A lot of deflections tonight. I was about ready to say for Shelby, this is a big possession. But in a three-point game in the fourth quarter, I think every possession is going to be big from here on out. You want to make sure you get a good look every time down. Russ Goddard with an off-balance shot. O'Brien with the rebound. Maybe a little bit of contact there, but maybe the official thought, well, the offense caused it, so we're, there's no foul called there. Haney at the other again. end, ball on the ground, first and ten Tigers. <laughs> and a timeout, again, wisely called by the Tigers. 6.32 to go in the ball game. A trip to the district semis is on the line. Now, how'd that ball get out of there? There was a scrum of three or four guys. The next, to, Now, I understand a football. That's weird shape. But a basketball is round. How does that squirt out of there? Well, as we have seen, especially in the first half, I think there might be something slippery on the basketball. Well, I'll tell you, you might have something to that because especially Shelby just does not look comfortable, comfortable tonight handling the basketball. Uh, we saw them in Ashland where it was an up-and-down game. They handled it so well. Few turnovers. Tonight, even besides the turnovers, the ball just seems to be slipping out of their hands and for whatever reason. Mansfield Sr. now with two timeouts to go. Yep. With six and a half minutes, Shelby with three. And this has the makings of a game that is going to go right down to the wire. And if you're going to call a timeout right there, which, you know, that's a good call, you want to be able to come out and convert. It's going to cost you a timeout. Let's at least convert two points out of it. See what set they have. They're spreading. Senior high is spreading the court a little bit. Going to bring Legrom off, throw a lob. And Miles Bradley runs it down. Where reverses to Bradley. Oh, Bryant with a nice move inside. He draws the foul. It'll go to the line, and he might be hurt. No, he's okay. Well, I was just ready to say how senior high is spreading the court. Shelby now with a three-point lead here in the fourth quarter. Looked like maybe they were giving less help, not wanting to give up an open three. That lane was wide open if you could beat your man at that time. Uh, uh, he was able to, uh, Jayante O'Brien was able to beat his man and at least collect the foul. First trip to the line tonight for O'Brien. He's a 43% free throw shooter, so anything you get from him from the free throw line is a positive. Well, he can make it a one-point game if he converts here. And Bruss Goddard clears the rebound. Nice Bruss spin. Goddard. Nice pass. 
It's Good knocked hand. away, and Gibson. I tell you what, I think I know why Kincaid Gibson is in there. I like his toughness. Oh, exactly. And we didn't see him for most of the season. I think he what played JV most of the season. I think he has been a spark in the games that we've had. He has been a spark for this team. He does not back down from anybody. No, no, he doesn't. He attacks the boards. And he's got a sweet 10 to 15 foot jump shot, which is great when you have someone like Maurice Ware that can penetrate and he's going to find you if you're just spotting up. Tigers going to be patient. Down by two. And Ware with a strong move inside. We're tied at 44. That's just uh, using your strength. Shelby almost turned it over. Well, and a whistle and a foul away from the ball on Alex Bruscotter. And again, you've seen Shelby players just slip out there on the court. Big defensive possession that time. I didn't see the hold. I wasn't watching. We had the replay, but big defensive possession by senior high. Big defensive stop. Now it's Shelby's turn to get a stop. Which team is going to get momentum first? Right now at... You know, I think momentum is about even like the score is. Tigers with a chance to take the lead as we approach the five-minute mark of this sectional final. Where I think he was trying to draw the foul. Yeah, I think he was. They're just... Base guarding Bruscotter, a long three, and that's a clutch shot for that, Bruscotter. That was because Kincaid Gibson was just face guarding him. He made a great cut, took his man down low, came up high, hard, and got a little bit of a cushion. Not much, but a little bit of a cushion to knock down the three. That was almost Grayson Sturry range. Yeah, that was. That was. But we've seen him hit that. Bradley. Lane opens up again. Reese Ware draws a foul and go to the line. I don't know what more you can say about the athleticism of Maurice Ware. Well, you're right. We talked about uh, pregame, about senior high, getting some ball movement, some people movement, getting a couple of ball reversals. When they're getting a couple of ball reversals, that lane opens up. Before Maurice took that, you saw no Shelby defender in the lane. And I think in Maurice's head, he thinks he can take about anybody. So he took him strong with his right hand. You don't want Maurice Ware to beat you with his strong hand. Russ Goddard drives inside, and help comes over from Ware, and he gets the block. Up ahead go the Tigers. They lay it up and in and take the lead. Nice job offensively. He was looking to maybe pass it back to Ware. And oh. O'Brien with a reach. Yeah, that was a good call. O'Brien doesn't like it, but that's a good call. And Holloway back into the game with four fouls for Shelby. And I think you have to. You know, there's only four minutes left anyway, but you're, you're down two. Get him back into it. Andre Hill will set it up as Shelby now down by two. Senior high with five team fouls, so they still have a, a foul to give. Not that you want to waste one this early, but still play aggressive. Andre Hill for three. Big shot. Nice ball movement, nice play, but a better shot. One point lead for Shelby, three and a half to go. Haney for three. That was downtown, wasn't it? That was from the square in Cyrus and another foul, a reach in by O'Brien. I don't know if we're going to have that replay. We always do with Adam, but I thought he almost doubled. 
almost double dribbled. I thought he was looking to pass. Let's watch it right here. He's got it with his right, left hand. Oh, well, maybe I'm no referee, but uh, that was close, but he gets the call, but now he's got to go to the free throw line. Oh, no, that's right, team foul six. So it's going to be out of bounds for, C for, uh, for Shelby. I'll get the teams right. Tigers up by two, three minutes to go. Notice who they brought in now to guard Holloway, or to guard Hill. Brock Hill, tough shot, ball batted around, and it comes down to the Tigers. And a foul, a reach in as he got the ball over to Ware, and will march to the other end. But if you're Shelby, that's who you want at the line. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's true. And as well as he has played, he has struggled from the line. And it makes it even tougher late in the game situation. Free throw percentages go down a little bit. But to me, he's been a gamer. Off the front of the iron, and Shelby with a chance to tie it with a two or take the lead with a three. Cutter drives inside, and the rebound down to Ware. And Ware got greedy. And Shelby doing a great job of, of getting back on defense. A no call on the drive inside. Ball batted around. Bruss got her. <laughs> it was almost picked off by Haney. Nope. And a big rebound by Chunky Haney. And a foul on the rebound by Isaiah Ramsey. And they'll march to the other end to shoot one and one. I tell you, I like the officials. There's a lot of contact inside. There They're is. letting them play. Well, there is. And again, you got to realize as you progress in the tournament, officials are going to let you play. I thought Shelby forced some. I thought they were quick with the shots. Uh, they just forced a couple of those looks. Haney at the line tonight is one for one, or one for two, excuse me. But he's one I would want there. But then again, that's me. Shelby with another chance to tie or take the lead. Shepard for three. Another three. They're settling for threes now. Pretty quick threes. I know Shepard's a good shooter, but... Now let's see if the Tigers take their foot off the accelerator and slow it down. Good job by Shelby. If you are going to pressure Maurice Ware out there, you better have help in the lane. Otherwise, he's going to go right to the hoop. And it was almost intercepted by Holloway. And it will stay with the Tigers, 1.31 to go. Shelby's got three timeouts. I can see him using one here pretty soon. Get a little bit organized, there we go. Timeout taken by Shelby. They will have two left, 1.31 to go. The Tigers up by two. A trip to the Ashland District on the line. And they would play the winner of Clear Fork and Lexington, which comes up after this one. So now, you're Galloway here, and you've watched your team come down, and I would question the shot selection. Right, right. What are you telling them now, down by two with a minute and a half to go? Well, again, there's a lot of time left. So number one, here you are uh, uh, on defense. Uh, if, if a player that you want to foul catches the ball, foul him. All righty? Foul him right away, get him to the line. Otherwise, there's a lot of time left. Give a lot of pressure on the basketball. If Maurice Ware has it, you're going to have to give some help in the paint. But when you come down on offense, whether you're still down two, whether it's three, whether it's four, a lot of possessions left. you got to get a score. If you have a shot from the three and you've got your feet under you and you're a shooter and they've had shooters take them, yeah, you can't pass that up. Otherwise, get the ball to the basket. Get to the ball to the basket right now and try to score on transition. See there in the score is scrolling across the bottom of the screen there. The top seed Huron is up 
45 to 34 over Ontario at the end of the third quarter. Shelby, the number two seed, and they have got their hands full tonight in the rematch with the Mansfield Senior High Tigers. And I the Tigers are going to be patient. Miles Bradley would be one that you might think about fouling. Well. And a turnover, and it's going to go to Shelby. A little tightrope walking on the sideline, and it's a opportunity now for Shelby. Now, if you're Shelby, if you have a set, Coach Galloway has a set that he really likes, this would be the time to run it. A minute to go, Shelby down by two. And it looks like they're running a set. Nice, get it inside, very nice play. Isaiah Ramsey ties it at 52. And again, they got the ball to the basket. Very nice setup. Now Senior High will be extremely patient, but I think if you're Shelby, you continue to play. Get out and pressure. Maurice Ware with 30 seconds to go. We are tied at 52. And the Tigers are going to milk it for the last shot. And I'm going to go out on a limb. Number three is going to take it. <laughs> yeah, there's a good chance. Good chance. You better give a lot of help. He gets in the paint. He's got a great pull up. Ten seconds. It's a win or overtime. Where? Inside it drops for the Tigers. And a timeout taken. Or do they get the timeout call? Yeah, they got the timeout. It's just a matter of how much time will they put on. Maybe a second. Still not much time. What a shot by Ware. He gave it up, got it back, and hit the potential game winner. Yeah, and it was a great find by Miles Bradley. He had a great penetration with his left hand. Great penetration. Drew a little bit of defense and knew that Maurice Ware was there. Found him for a short jumper. Well, it's going to take a miracle now for Shelby. They will have, it'll be interesting to see how much time they put on the clock. Well, they, it will be because they, they, they can't go to the camera. They can't go to replay. It's just all whatever the referee saw, and I guess they saw 1.8. What a finish for the Tigers. They're going to put .8 seconds oh, on the clock. .8. That makes a big difference. 1.8, you'd be able to get a dribble off. Well, and they have to go the length of the floor. Exactly. Not like the NBA where you get to bring it to half court. Now, if you're Marquis Sykes, you're telling, and you put your tallest player on the ball, and you tell them, do not foul. Well, yeah, you do. And also, don't run into somebody. A lot of times what a team will do because the guy taking the ball out of bounds will run baseline. The opposing team will bring a player down to try to get a, a cheap call, a cheap foul. So you tell uh, uh, 22 right now for Mansfield, you hands up, but if there's a Shelby player down there, just, just let him go. Let the guy go. Tigers looking for win number seven and a sectional championship. Well, another timeout called as Greg Galloway wanted to see what the setup was. Right, right. Wanted to see what the setup was, and now we'll see what he comes out. That time he had some height, one down about 10 feet from the ball out of bounds, and one back here at the quarter court. So, so if you're Marquis Sykes now, do you change the call? or oh, I, I, I mean, you see this all the yeah, time in sports. Yeah, they call yeah. a timeout, point they eight, come back out. Point eight, you just want to make them catch the ball going towards senior high's basket. Don't let them catch the ball on the run going towards their own basket. And then also, if you're senior high, again, tell whoever. It's been Elias Owens who is uh, guarding the guy out of bounds. Hey. You know, you can move with the guy, but don't run into anybody. You know, have your peripheral vision. Look, make sure that there's not somebody there to run into. I would think when uh, Shelby saw the uh, uh, alignment right here by Mansfield Sr., I would think Shelby's going to try to sneak somebody down 
and try to get a cheap call. I say a cheap call, but a a a foul on you know players that are not prepared. Well, we've already seen it once—a foul on a screen. Well, we have. You're right. You're right. But watch for number one right now, maybe to go down or there we go. Good. See how he tried. Shepard throws it in. Holloway catches, turns, and that is it. The Tigers win a sectional championship by defeating Shelby 54 to 52. We will be back to wrap it up right after this. You're watching Boys High School Basketball live, free, and exclusively on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, we're oh my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. It's Freedom Fest Ohio featuring Justin Moore. You look like I need a drink right now. Crowder. God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Rodney Atkins. Makes me want to take a back road. Austin French Makes and more. Friday and Saturday, July 1st and 2nd. Morrow County Fairgrounds in Mount Gilead, Ohio. For tickets and more info, visit freedomfestohio.com.
Time for the Finley and Sons Train Service post-game show. I am Brian Harder along with Greg Collins. And, well, for excitement, it doesn't get any better than that. Oh. Mansfield Sr. with a dramatic come-from-behind win. And it's fitting for the Tigers that they were able to come from behind after they had Shelby at Pete Henry earlier this year. And Shelby came from behind. But as you mentioned earlier, this is the one that mattered. Well, exactly. This is the tournament game. This is the one that you win, you get to keep playing. You lose, unfortunately, your season is over. So Senior High has been playing well lately, and they continue tonight to play a very, very efficient basketball game. Talking with Marquis Sykes before this game, he felt that momentum was on the side of his Tigers. They were able to come out and play very well against Galleon, and then they carried that to tonight. And what I was impressed with by the Tigers, they didn't panic when they fell behind. Well, they did. You're right. They kept battling, kept battling, and some guys contributed that have been contributing the last four or five basketball games that we've seen. And, you know, they made the plays at the end, and I thought their defense was just outstanding tonight. Got to be an awkward feeling for the man standing there on the ladder right now, Nathan Loney, who was the head coach of these Shelby Whippets last right. year when they went on their tournament run. But it's got to be especially gratifying for this man, Marquis Sykes, as he goes up. And when you think about all of the struggles and everything they went through for a sectional title. Well, remember, we've talked about it. We've talked about the Martin RPI, and they rank senior high as the third most difficult Division II schedule in the state. Well, playing that difficult schedule, playing the Lima Seniors, playing the Spire Academies, that helps prepare you for tournament play. Games like this are going to be tight come the end. Well, and they're not done. No. Nope. They've got another game. The second game of this doubleheader is going to be Lexington at Clear Fork or against Clear Fork. So Mansfield Sr. will probably hang around and watch to see who wins that game. And then their season will continue next week at Ashland High School as they will go to the district semis. Let's take a look at the final numbers for tonight's game. And this was just a game that really, from start to finish, I thought it was going to come down to a free throw. But Maurice Ware, I like the fact that he was able to give it up and then get it back, and he hit a makeable shot for him in the lane. Right. I thought it was a great look, great recognition by Miles Bradley. Uh, to find Maurice Ware at about, what, seven, eight feet from the basket. He just used his athletic ability, his strength, and jumped over the defense, and nice soft shot off the backboard. Eight of 16 from the line. We thought that might be a factor later on, but it really wasn't. Shelby, they showed some, they, they were human from the line. They actually missed a few. Right. And you look at the turnovers. Shelby with 15 turnovers. The Tiger defense was really able to come up when they needed to. Well, it, they did. They held Shelby to 10 for 30 from inside the arc. That, that is tough. Shelby trying to get the ball to the basket. Senior high just would deny him the chance to get all the way to the rim. But 10 for 30 inside the arc is not going to get it done, and it didn't get it done tonight. We're going to take a timeout. We come back. Hopefully we will be able to corral our player of the game. Stay with us. The Tigers advance to the district semifinals. You've been watching Boys High School Basketball live and free exclusively on the OH Report. Welcome to Richland County's first artificial intelligence ATM. And if you car dance to the song you're listening to now, I will give you $50. See, that's 
something an ATM can never do. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Oh, oh we're my serious. Gosh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. We <laughs> hope your day is a little bit better today. Yes, thank you. It's Freedom Fest Ohio featuring Justin Moore. You look like I need a drink right now. Crowder. Rodney Atkins, Makes me wanna take a back road. Austin French, Makes and more. Friday and Saturday, July 1st and 2nd, Morrow County Fairgrounds in Mount Gilead, Ohio. For tickets and more info, visit freedomfestohio.com. Tonight's Reinhardt Law Office's player of the game, Maurice Ware, 18 points, including the game winner in the final seconds. What were you guys wanting to do in those final two minutes when you had that two-point lead? Um, you know what I mean? I, I threw a couple of bad turnovers, uh, so my coach told me and everyone else to stay calm. You know, this game wasn't going to be easy. They told us that from the start, that this game was not going to be easy, so we had to fight all the way through to the very end. I think um, that play came with high IQ patience and you know recognizing game time situation now it's really kind of ironic because you guys had the lead the first time you guys played through much of the ball game and they were able to come back tonight they had the lead through much of the game and you guys were able to maintain your poise and your composure what was the mindset did you guys feel that you were never out of this ball game oh uh, yeah our coaches told us um stay stay calm you know what i mean we talked everything over half time we, we talked about what we needed to do better and um, we came out and we, we fought. They fought really hard. All respect goes to them. They fought really hard too, but they had to lead the whole game. And our coaches told us stay calm. So through the end of the, through the, end of the game, you know what I mean? Our, we got to the basket, we was moving the ball and everything just came together for us. And then that last, that last shot, you know what I mean? is just patience and time. Well, walk us through that last possession. You're standing at the top of the key, dribbling it down. You get down to 10 seconds, then what's going through your mind? Um, you know what I mean? I didn't want to go score at like, 27 seconds or in the 20s, I, I kind of wanted it, I kind of wanted to wait till I was about six seconds in. You know what I mean? Uh, I seen Miles Bradley. They was looking for help on me. They they knew I wanted to get to the rim. I seen they they had help side. I threw it to Miles Bradley. He threw it back to me. You know, uh, coach teaches me all the time. Shout out to Sykes. Uh, to hard two foot jump stop, go up strong and finish. So that's what that's what the last play was about. I know you guys have had a frustrating regular season, but none of that matters now. You guys are 2-0 and when it counts, and you're going to be able to continue your season next week. Congratulations, and good luck next week. Thank you. Hey, Our and I'm on you, too. Where's my gear? Oh, 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 it's right here. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> thank you. Man, thank we you. thought we were going to get away with not giving it to him. Uh, He's like, I want my swag. <laughs> Congratulations to the Reinhardt Law Office's player of the game, Maurice Ware, 18 points and a fantastic finish as he hits the game winner. We're going to get Marquis Sykes over here as well. We want to talk to him and get his thoughts on this win. Oh, as we hit the headset. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Well, it wasn't a running clock like with Galleon, but it was nevertheless, it was an opportunity for you guys to well, appreciate it. 
<laughs> it wasn't a running clock like you guys had against Galleon, but it was an opportunity for you guys, I think, really to kind of grow emotionally because you guys had to fight back and deal with some adversity. Oh, absolutely. Um, we've had five or six of those kinds of games this year, so we've been in that situation. It just hasn't gone in our favor yet. So that was the first time this, this season where we've uh, gone down to the wire and we were able to come out on the, the winning end with the last second shot. Uh, the guys fought through hard uh, the entire second half. We were chasing five points coming out uh, in the third quarter. I uh, thought our start to the third quarter was exactly what we needed. We got defensive stops, we got rebounds, uh, we got a couple buckets early, and, and that was what we needed to, uh, to make sure we stayed in the game, kept our confidence, and, and, and uh, was able to eventually close it out on the last possession of the game. You told me before the game, you guys, you felt like you had momentum on your side as you headed to the postseason, and that now steamrolls over to Ashland. Oh, no doubt about it. We, uh, we, we After the season didn't go the way we wanted it to go, you know, we were out of conference contention. Uh, we, we, we felt like we, we just needed to turn the table and, and, and put our focus on getting better for the tournament and, and preparing for uh, these situations right here. And, and for us to be in a situation where we get to play for a championship uh, with, with the kind of season that we had. We wanted to make sure we left everything on the floor. We left nothing up to chance. And uh, the guys did a, good, a pretty good job of executing the game plan for the most part. And, and uh, we were able to come out as sectional champs. I'll let you go join your team. Congratulations on a hard fought win and we'll see you in Ashland. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you. Tigers head coach Marquis Sykes after the Tigers win a sectional championship by defeating the Shelby Whippets by a score of 54 to 52. That will be all here from game one as we will now go to game two. We'll take a break as the Shelby Whippets fall to the Tigers of Mansfield Senior 54 to 52. For Greg Collins, I'm Brian Harder. So long for now from Cyrus.